Hey friend, it's great to have you back. Thanks for tuning in. Today we are going over how I have learned to do double unders. I think this is really gonna help. Double unders have become increasingly popular. People are wanting to learn how to do them for the CrossFit Open. The general fitness community has taken a hold of them. It's a good tool to have in your fitness arsenal. So with that said, I kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that I've seen when it comes to people doing double unders that I want to identify so we can make sure that we're not doing it when we go to practice ours. First and foremost, people try to force it. They get really tense and really aggressive. So like some aggression levels that people don't have all of a sudden come out when they want to do double unders and you don't have to force it. You wanna be smooth. Also, people have a tendency to practice a lot of bad habits. When they're first learning, one of the bad habits that people will practice is doing them with bent elbows. When you're doing them with bent elbows, it's creating poor mechanics that we don't want to practice and we don't wanna hone in. We wanna make sure that we're practicing the correct mechanics all the time. People think that what is gonna help them is doing a single under and then a double under, going back to a single under and then trying another, another double under. But what that creates is poor rhythm and poor timing. Again, it's ingraining a bad habit. And then one of my favorite things to see, the speed to jump ratio. It's like people think that they need to jump really high and spin the rope as fast as they possibly can, not realizing that they're probably gonna do a quadruple under before they're gonna do a double under with the speed of their rope. Make sure you slow it down and you're smooth. Timing is everything. I wanted to go over some of the mechanics that I have been taught from some jump rope companies that I've worked with or that you might see in double under skill videos online. The first thing, Make sure your arms are straight. Everything is going to start from the wrist and you want to have straight arms in order to do that. When I say straight arms, think relaxed arms. Arms that kind of just drop to your side. You're not trying to lock your elbow out, you're relaxed. Second, we wanna make sure that our body is streamlined. When we're doing double unders, we want to stand and jump with good posture. Don't become so erect that you tense up, but don't be so relaxed that you're drooped forward. Just think good, smooth posture as if you're just walking down the street with a smile. Third, one of the other things that is taught in the mechanics of the double under is jumping consistently. Like I mentioned before, when people try to do a single under and a double under, they're practicing bad timing and they're getting inconsistent jumps. Make sure your jumps are the same over and over and over. We're like a metronome when we're doing double unders. My fourth point is to make sure that you're spinning the rope from your wrists and not your shoulders. Too often I hear people talking about how their shoulders are burnt out when they're doing double unders. It shouldn't be that way because your arms are straight to your side and relaxed, if you're spinning from your wrist, it should not go all the way up and transfer to your shoulders. If anything, your forearms should be burning. My next point, for heaven's sake, do not tuck your knees. This doesn't help. Tucking your knees is gonna throw off the timing of your double under and it's gonna make it for an inconsistent jump. And not to mention, it is not sustainable and your quads are gonna get extremely tired. One of the other things that will throw off timing is piking your body, where you jump up and your feet come out in front of you and your chest goes forward a little bit. It creates a lot of unnecessary movement and it is definitely gonna tire you out a lot more than you realize. So let's talk about some of the things that have helped me with my double unders and the things that I practiced when I was first learning them. The biggest thing with double unders is you have to have rhythm. If you gotta take a dance class, go take a dance class, but we gotta find some rhythm. When I first learned, I broke it down to a simple three word rhythm that really resonated with me. And that was jump, spin, spin, jump, spin, spin. If you can find that rhythm, you're going to get double unders. Whether you jump high or whether you're jumping really short, the rhythm doesn't change. It may speed up, but it's the same rhythm. If you need to, I would repeat this to yourself over and over and over. One of the things that I did early on was I wouldn't even put a rope in my hands. I would get in the, the proper mechanics that I talked about earlier and I would jump and I would spin, spin my wrists. Jump, spin, spin my wrists. And I would practice that even without a rope so it got ingrained in my mind so as soon as I put a rope in my hands, I knew what I was doing. I watched videos of other athletes doing double unders. I watched gymnasts and professional jump ropers doing them. And I would sit and I would listen to that rhythm, the jump, spin, spin, jump, spin, spin. And I got used to that sound. So as soon as I started doing double unders, I could listen for that and I could hear whether or not I was close. 
So as soon as you get that cue, like, oh my gosh, like I can hear it, it's coming, you know that your double under is just right there. And my last point is, I practice these every single day until I got them. I would practice them as long as I could mentally stand because I understand how frustrating it can be. And I'd come back the next day fresh and I would practice again and I'd get used to that rhythm, get used to that sound. Practice them every day, whether in your warm up or your cool down, give them a shot and familiarize yourself with it. I think they're gonna come quick. So I hope this video helps you and I hope that you can put some of these ideas and concepts into practice. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe. We're gonna continue to put out content like this. See you guys in the next video. See you later.